Are the stars in the night sky already dead? It's a good question, and the simple answer is, maybe, maybe not. That covers just about every possibility. The question is, in fact, fascinating, because it concerns concepts of simultaneity, space-time, and the maximum speed at which information can travel. We can take the question to mean, how can stars shine if they no longer exist? Well, it depends on when and where you are. These concepts, when and where, are the same things in space-time and light years. Let's take Betelgeuse for example. Betelgeuse is a red giant, about 600 light years away, which is pretty close by astronomical standards. It's sometimes called Alpha Orionis, since it's the brightest star in the constellation Orion. But pretty close still means that what we see of Betelgeuse is 600 years old, since that's how long light takes to get to here from there. And light, whether visible or radio, or any other wavelength, can only travel at a maximum of 186,000 miles per second, or 300,000 kilometers per second. Betelgeuse seems to be dimming as we see it now, which has made astronomers pretty excited. This is because it may be about to explode, because red giants after they burn through their lighter elements, typically contract and then expand explosively. We're all waiting to see if this happens, but the dimming we see happened 600 years ago in our frame of reference. Likewise with the star KIC 8462852, or Tabitha's star, is also dimming, but on the whole, in a progressive fashion, with some intervals of temporary brightening. This star is 1480 light years away, so whatever we see happening there actually happened at least 1480 years ago, by our frame of reference. We really don't understand what's going on there either, although we do have some ideas. Talking to a Mars rover takes 7 to 11 minutes, depending on where Mars is in its orbit. If our own star, the Sun, exploded, the blast wouldn't hit us for about 9 minutes after it really happened. The point is that nothing in the universe is happening as we see it, when we see it, because of the built-in and unavoidable lag time caused by the upper limit of the speed of light, and electromagnetic radiation in general. No matter where we look in the universe, we are actually seeing the past. For example, the galaxy GNZ11 has been measured as 13.4 billion light years away, which means that it somehow formed, and how this could be remains a mystery, only 400 million years after the universe began. Astronomers have been studying a giant, super hot blue star in a galaxy 75 million light years away, a star millions of times brighter than our own sun, and then one day, it was gone. How did this happen? We don't know, and of course, it's too far away to see in terms of visible, optical light, so we use spectral analysis of its wavelengths. But it's just not there anymore, and no one knows why. There was no explosion, no supernova, no nothing. But whatever it was, it happened 75 million years ago. Astronomers theorise that a predictive phenomenon may have happened, which is that this giant hot star simply fizzled out into a black hole without any of the anticipated excitement. In other words, it just vanished. We are psychologically predispositioned, even conditioned, to regard events as occurring at the moment we observe them, because all organisms are shaped by adaption for survival. This is generally a wise policy, because even if a predator launches an attack on you, several fractions of a second before you see it, knowing this is no help at all. So it gets confusing when we try to process the idea that we hear or see something several seconds or minutes after the sound or event occurred, but that's what happens. Sound, of course, isn't electromagnetic radiation. It's much slower, and still involves a lag time. The events we see or hear in the night sky, in the form of optical images, or radio, or gamma rays, or x-rays, are from so far away that we have to start thinking in terms of hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions of light years away and a corresponding number of years in the past. This is because there is really no such thing as simultaneity, in the sense of two or more things, whatever they may be, happening at exactly the same time. And this is because of relativity, and the upper limit of the speed at which information can travel. 
When we talk or think of simultaneity, or at the same time, we are really talking about what is called an absolute Cartesian coordinate system, where everything is referenced to one point. And this works, in a rough way, if we're talking about short distances and intervals of time. Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, works pretty well, because there is very little lag time between events referenced in it. Time zones are actually a different idea, and are not pertinent to this. But for an event to even happen, there has to be some sort of consequence. Essentially just the transfer of information, and this is limited by the maximum speed of electromagnetic radiation. There is no absolute time, because this would require some sort of universal clock that everything in the universe detects at the same time, and this cannot happen. The only knowledge we have of the universe is what reaches us, and this takes time. You can see the problem here, the cap on the speed of EMR, and there is no getting around it, because mass increases as speed increases, and there is no getting around that either. At the speed of light, mass becomes infinite. As a result, there really can't be anything like simultaneity, or any sense of, at the same time because there is no absolute zero point of reference. We can talk about an event that, from our point of view, happened a hundred, or thousands, or a million, or a billion years ago, but that's just what we see now. So with all this in mind, are the stars we see actually dead? As we said at the beginning, maybe some of them are, but we won't know until we've received that information, and there is no way of us knowing until that happens. It is not like we are somehow able to experience real time, because all we are doing is experiencing time as it passes in our own frame of reference. Somewhere else in the universe, any events will have happened at some other time, determined by the speed of light. There is no one absolute time, and so no simultaneity. So from our perspective, some of the stars we see may well be obliterated, and what we see is what it used to be many years ago. So to answer the age-old question, the answer is, that it is very possible that some of the stars we see are no longer there anymore from their own frame of reference. So next time you're looking up at the night sky, you really could be looking at a star that died many years ago, an ever reassuring thought that the universe is an exceedingly strange place, and we've only just begun to scratch its surface.